Located on a lonely island in the middle of San Francisco Bay, Alcatraz, aka The Rock, had held captive since the Civil War. But it was in 1934, the high point of a major war on crime, that Alcatraz was re-fortified into the world's most secure prison. In the 1930s, Alcatraz was already a forbidding place, surrounded by the cold, and, rough waters of the Pacific. The redesign included tougher iron bars, a series of strategically positioned guard towers, and strict rules, including a dozen checks a day of the prisoners, an escape seemed near impossible. Despite the odds, from 1934 until the prison was closed in 1963, 36 men tried 14 separate escapes. Nearly all were caught or didn't survive the attempt. The fate of three particular inmates, however, remains a mystery to this day. The three escapees were, John Anglin, Clarence Anglin, and Frank Morris. But before we get to our story, have you subscribed to our channel? If not, kindly hit that subscribe button. Comments are also welcome. And without further ado, let's get started. Frank Morris arrived at Alcatraz in January 1960 after convictions for bank robbery, burglary, and other crimes and repeated attempts to escape various prisons. Later that year, a convict by the name of John Anglin was sent to Alcatraz, followed by his brother Clarence in early 1961. All three knew each other from previous stints in prison. Assigned to adjoining cells, they began hatching a plan to escape. Morris, known for his intelligence, took the lead in the planning and they were aided by another inmate, Alan West. On June 12, 1962, the routine early morning bed check was nothing but a shock to the guards because three convicts were not in their cells, John Anglin, his brother Clarence, and Frank Morris. In their beds were cleverly built dummy heads made of plaster, flesh tone paint, and real human hair that fooled the night guards. This led the prison to go on lockdown, and an intensive search began. As the days went by, the FBI, the Coast Guard, Bureau of Prison Authorities, and others began to find more evidence and piece together the ingenious escape plan. Thanks to the help they got from Alan West who didn't make it out of his cell and who was part of the initial escape plan, started providing the FBI with information. They learned that. 1. The group had begun laying plans the previous December when one of them came across some old saw blades. Using crude tools, including a homemade drill made from the motor of a broken vacuum cleaner, the plotters each loosened the air vents at the back of their cells by painstakingly drilling closely spaced holes around the cover so the entire section of the wall could be removed. Once through, they hid the holes with whatever they could. 2. Behind the cells was a common, unguarded utility corridor. They made their way down this corridor and climbed to the roof of their cell block inside the building, where they set up a secret workshop. There, taking turns keeping watch for the guards in the evening before the last count used a variety of stolen and donated materials to build and hide what they needed to escape. More than 50 raincoats that they stole or gathered were turned into makeshift life preservers and a 6 by 14 foot rubber raft, the seams carefully stitched together and vulcanized by the hot steam pipes in the prison, the idea came from magazines that were found in the prisoner's cells. They also built wooden paddles and converted a musical instrument into a tool to inflate the raft. And on the evening of June 11th, they were ready to go. West, though, did not have his ventilator grill completely removed and was left behind. The three others got into the corridor, gathered their gear, climbed up and out through the ventilator, and got onto the prison roof. Then, they shimmied down the bakery smokestack at the rear of the cell house, climbed over the fence, snuck to the northeast shore of the island, and launched their raft. Morris and the Anglin certainly escaped from Alcatraz Island, but it is not known whether they successfully escaped to the mainland. Fragments of their rubber equipment were found on or near Angel Island, a former immigration station that was their intended intermediate destination. From Angel Island, the men had intended to swim to the Murray County mainland, according to West, and then steal new clothes from a retail store. However, no such crime was reported. In the ensuing years, there were supposedly several sightings of the escapees and messages from them. Reports of their survival were offered to the media by family members and former associates. The FBI remained skeptical and closed its case in 1979, concluding that the three had drowned in the bay. 
That brings us to the end of this episode. If you enjoyed watching this video, kindly subscribe, it's free.